Hi there, Rudy the Dick Coughlin 616. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. One of the many criticisms I receive when I criticise other people who criticise religion is, aren't you an atheist? Surely you believe this is bullshit anyway. Why are you helping the enemy? Which I feel is the wrong question. The question you should be asking is, why are the people I am criticising helping the enemy? After all, it is they who are speaking as if they are experts on a subject that they clearly know very little or nothing about. Or they're just making stuff up. This immediately not only detracts from your own credibility, but it adds to the, of the other side as well. This is one of the problems I had with the first part of the film Zeitgeist, which was basically just atheist methadone, really. It's a 30 minute documentary of just bullshit with disparate facts used to tie it all in together. But most of it is just completely made up. Now, you might say, but it's all bullshit anyway, so who cares? To which I would say, I fucking do. And guess what? So do the people who you are claiming believe this bullshit, but don't. How the hell are you going to convince anybody that what they believe is bullshit when the bullshit you're trying to tell them they don't believe is what they don't believe in the first place? Imagine you hadn't seen the film Lord of the Rings. Imagine you had never seen it before in your life and you go up to someone and say to them, hey, what's this Lord of the Rings movie about? And they tell you, well, it's a story where a load of Polish gnomes sit around playing chess for ages in their underpants with freeze-dried hamsters. Now this would be completely wrong. It would be an awesome movie, of course, but it would be completely wrong. And it shouldn't matter that Lord of the Rings is made up bullshit anyway, and the thing you've just made up is made up bullshit, therefore it doesn't matter. The fact is you have greatly misrepresented Lord of the Rings. So now in the future, whenever that person you've just told that to is asked by somebody, hey, have you seen Lord of the Rings? They go, no, why would I want to see a load of Polish gnomes playing chess with a load of hamsters? They're going to be look at them as if their flies are undone and their willies hanging out. A more familiar example of this would be when a creationist goes up to an atheist and goes, hey, you just believe we all came from monkeys. Which, of course, isn't necessarily true. And as a result of it not being true, it's completely useless and is totally futile in trying to argue against that point. Now this brings me on to the two gentlemen who will be the subject of this video. The first is a guy called Robert Spencer, who runs a very popular website called Jihad Watch. Now, whilst I admit I am not an expert when it comes to the text of the Quran, I am good friends with a lot of people on YouTube who are. In fact, I will leave links to several of their channels below. I recommend you subscribe to them. What I found interesting is that almost none of these guys, who, as far as I'm aware, have any interest in Jihad Watch as a website. In fact, several of them have told me that it is a bullshit website and it is completely and utterly ridiculous. And anyone who listens to it as an expert on the Quran or Islam is being completely and utterly misguided. Here's a small example that was brought to my attention. On the Jihad Watch website, it cites as part of the Hadiths this. Now, what's wrong with that? The fact is, nothing of that name exists in the Hadiths. It should actually be this. Now, I know this might seem a tad nitpicky and me just going over something that's a little bit trivial, but if I set up a website called Bible Watch and claim to be this big expert on all the biblical texts and all of the Gospels and all of the Old and New Testament, I don't think it's too much for you to ask, and you're not being too demanding, by asking me that I should at least get the text and the verses right. It's no good to me telling you to look up chapter 1, verse 3 of Deuterectomy or go and look at the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, George, or Ringo. But ultimately, none of this really matters, because Robert Spencer doesn't need to be an expert on Islam, because the people he's appealing to, he's not appealing to their sense of intellect, he's appealing to their sense of fear. And he has a much simpler agenda to push. Recently, Robert Spencer appeared on a TV show called The 700 Club, which is hosted by Pat Robertson. Here is what Spencer had to say. Well, I tell you, I think the unpleasant truth about it is, is that the media being hard left is essentially anti-American. And so anything that's American, that's Western, that's Christian, that's Judeo-Christian, they hate. And so they see Islam and it's non-Western and non-Christian and they love it. There you have it. The liberal media is in bed with radical Islam because it hates America and the West. Now, somebody who believes that to be a factual statement is somebody who must be of such monumental stupidity that I can only imagine they spend their weekends roaming around the wooded mountains, listening to dueling banjos and buggering the shit out of Ned Beatty. But this isn't the case with Spencer. He's not a stupid person. He's actually quite intelligent. He's just a hateful demagogue like all the others that I've been dealing with on this channel. And he's profiting out of other people's fears and paranoia based around the political climate that we happen to find ourselves in in Europe and America. Not surprisingly, Pat Robertson agrees wholeheartedly with Robert Spencer on what he just said, but I'm more interested in what 
Pat Robertson said directly after that in this clip. Ladies and gentlemen, it's out there. You know, you ask the media in this country, what in heaven's name is wrong with you? Are you so anti-American? Are you so opposed to this great nation and the freedoms you have that you want to embrace something out of the 8th century B.C.? Now, just in case you missed that, or if you got it and you want to make sure you weren't, didn't mishear anything, I'll play that again. That you want to embrace something out of the 8th century B.C.? Yes, Pat Robertson just stated that Islam started in the 8th century B.C. Pat Robertson thinks Islam began 800 years before Christ. Now, I don't even think I can articulate accurately in any way the level of ignorance you need in order to make a statement that stupid. Now, I know Pat Robertson, who is the end-level boss of Christian fundy fucktards on the world, has said some pretty retarded fucking shit. But this is the level of shit I would expect from a downy who's got a breath that stinks of a bus's windows. This is a tad problematic for him, what he's just done here. Because the Quran, unlike the Bible, was written by one man in one lifetime. So the Quran would have had to have been written and finished before Jesus was born. Eight centuries before. What's more is that Jesus himself is actually mentioned in the Quran and it talks frequently about his life and what he did. Which means that Muhammad was, in fact, a prophet. A prophet who wrote extensively about things that weren't going to happen for nearly a thousand years later. So this means that Pat Robertson has just proven that Islam is the one true faith, Allah is God, and Muhammad was, in fact, his prophet. That's quite a big fuck up for the most prominent evangelical Christian on the planet today. And people have the gall to call me an Islamo sympathizer. Whatever you think of me, I've never gone as far as to attempt to prove Islam to be true. But don't worry, Pat, I'm sure you can just contact Robert Spencer, give him a call, and he'll write something on Jihad Watch about this verse in the Quran where Muhammad met this mad, wide eyed doctor called Emmett Brown and his assistant, Marty McFly, and he got in this big metal box that took him into the past. And who cares that that doesn't happen anyway, because after all, it's all bullshit anyway, right? The first rule of war is supposed to be know thy enemy. Well, in the world of skepticism and critical thinking, the first rule is know your bullshit. Because when you try and debunk bullshit with more bullshit, you haven't debunked anything, you've just made twice as much bullshit for the rest of us to clear up. Richard the Dick Conference 616, thank you for listening. Good night, may God be less.